Howdy, I hope you're having a great day. I'm the Amateur Logician from AmateurLogician.com, and today we're going to take a look at a very, very unique book on physics, believe it or not. And that's because it's a physics book with a grounding in traditional logic. It even talks about the categories. So it talks about essence and substance, and a substance properties or accents, which include quantity, quality, relation, place, time, position, habit, action, and passion. To be sure, it has its own unique terminology, but it covers the traditional 10 list. And we talked about those categories in other videos. Now, I'm much more of a math and philosophy person than a physics person. I've taken a couple of university physics courses, so I know something about it, but I'm certainly no expert by any means, by any means. But this is a very unique textbook. There's nothing out there on the market like this today. And I want to look at this book because it covers traditional logic, because it thinks about first principles, because it thinks about the categories. It's by Dr. Anthony Rees. It's designed for a first semester university course. It's calculus-based. So let's look at the table of contents and then jump into the logic and philosophy. So it's physics for realists, mechanics, modern physics with a common sense grounding. What does it mean, common sense grounding? Well, it means that we have access to an intelligible universe around us. It takes a direct realist approach in epistemology. Our external senses allow us to observe things in the world. And then through that observation, we can build mathematical models to describe many phenomena around them. So first we have the table of contents. So the first chapter is on what is physics, and then it gets into vectors and calculus, momentum, changing momentum, force, energy and work, harmonic osculators, angular momentum, gravity. It thinks about the possibility of a man trip to Mars and the physics involved with that. And then the final chapter is introduction to special relativity. It also has an appendix, at least a couple of appendixes, which covers the 10 categories in philosophical depth and defends them in a very interesting way. So as I said, chapter one is what is physics? But notice that it thinks about, hey, how do we know physical things in the first place? Well, we know it through our senses and through abstract knowledge. And then things about firm fundamental principles. As may be expected, the foundational principles are very obvious and simple. They are, one, things exist, two, things change. That's a big one. What is physics studying? It studies how things act, how things behave, how things change. It talks about velocity and acceleration. It talks about momentum. It talks about energy. So we better affirm that things indeed change, right? But also, if we're going to think logically about physics, we better embrace, according to Dr. Rees, the principle of non-contradiction. Namely, something cannot be and not be the same time in the same way. But also, we should embrace the principle of causality. Something cannot change itself. Something cannot give itself something it doesn't have. It can, however, act on, change other things according to what it is. But also, we should embrace that there are substances out there, and they have properties, or what has traditionally been called accidents. So some things, namely substances, exist of themselves, while others can only exist as aspects of a substance, call them properties. Then we get into the categories of properties, and this list should look very familiar if you've studied traditional logic or if you watch some of my other videos. So we see there are nine different generic types of properties of physical things. The first two types are intrinsic to the substance, like quantity, extension, and quality. So quantity would include plane, circle, number, three dimensions. Quality would include figure, color, hardness, pressure, hot, cold, tone, smells, and tastes. And the remaining categories are relative to another substance in some way. So we have relation, like equality, similarity, action, for example, heating, moving, reception, to be heated, to be moved, place, for example, a fish in a certain region of water in the tank, orientation, the cylinder is rotated by 90 degrees, environment, the water around a fish, time, now, today, yesterday, a second from now. And then it elaborates upon that. So notice we have first and foremost the substance, and these nine categories are predicates of the substance. So without the substance, these categories wouldn't exist. We predicate these things of substances. That's the main point there. And then we have the so-called imperiometric method. This really traces back to Aristotle in a way, but that terminology actually comes from the great 
Thomas philosopher Jacques Maritain, and he has a book on epistemology um, on that subject. But it's a very, very complicated uh, book. Now, if we jump to the end of this textbook, we really, really jump to the end, we get to our appendix C. So appendix one is on substance of the nine categories of properties. So again, we have substance and property. We think about change of the nine categories. And there's really a big philosophical argument that these categories are very important to, to think about, and these are real distinctions we can make. So this is a very unique book, but this is also pretty cool right here, some axiomization. So for example, definition one, a physical substance is a whole that exists of itself and its characteristic property is its changeability. And then it gets into axiom one, which is self-evident. That which exists of itself, substance, is in principle before its property, including its parts. That is to say, its parts, so to speak, depend upon the whole. Um, the various predicates of a substance depend upon the substance, right? So if we talk about the height of Socrates, you can't talk about the height of Socrates without Socrates actually existing. And then it talks about two types of change. We can talk about quantitative, qualitative change. We talk about change of place. Then we get into theorem one, all physical substances must have extension, namely quantity. And then there's a, an argument of why that is the case. So it's a really interesting book, um, even for those who are not super interested in physics. But if you are interested in philosophy of nature, in ontology and metaphysics, in traditional logic, this is a good book, a good reference to have. So it's a very interesting book, as you can see. And this is really just a preview of this. So. I mean, if you're interested, um, we can go more in depth with this book. I wouldn't mind doing that because I think it's a really cool book to learn from. And there's so much to learn from Dr. Reed. I mean, obviously, really a brilliant, brilliant guy. And it's rare to have someone who is a physicist, but also who really thinks deeply about philosophical principles, first principles. A lot of times, physicists just take for granted that kind of stuff. So this is just an overview. Um, look here, Theorem 6. All physical substances exist in time. So here's the argument for that. Change should only be understood as happening in time. It proceeds from point A to point B through some duration of time. Time is the measure of motion, but motion proceeds through a continuum of nows. They're inexorably linked, and then it elaborates upon that kind of argument there to defend that, that theorem. So yeah, I just really think this is a book, pardon, this is a cool book to have, cool reference to have especially if you're interested in logic and philosophy, because we should think logically and philosophically about physics, and a lot of people don't. It's a very unique textbook. It's physicist for realist. I am the Amateur Logician, and if you enjoyed this type of video, hey, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the like button. You can also visit my website at amateurlogician.com. I have an extensive tutorial on traditional verbal cell logic. Until next time, bye for now, and be well. Thank you for watching.